Hey there, Commanders. Today I have the Federal Assault Ship. The smallest and lightest of the Federal Piggies, it's the most accessible from a budget standpoint, and it's relatively low on the Federal rank grind, so it's a very achievable ship if you put in the effort. This build is optimized for PvE purposes. I don't recommend the Federal Assault Ship as depicted here for PvP, although among the Federal Piggies it is the most popular in that category. With a boost speed of 550 meters per second, as laid out here, it has the maneuverability and speed to tangle with a Ferdinance, though it lacks the front-end DPS necessary to crack that ship's shields. So in equivalently skilled pilot engagements, the Ferdinance is still the most favorable option. There are occasionally stories and rumors I hear of people in Federal Assault ships beating, let's say, low-skill gankers in a Ferdinance. I wouldn't count on that being the case if you fly their ship. Most people that I've encountered in a Ferdilance are competent and capable and have enough advantages that any weaknesses they might have in their flight style are more than made up for by the sheer volume of shield and hull capabilities that the Ferdilance is able to proc. Internals are laid out as follows. Reactive surface composite, heavy, gra heavy duty grade 5 and deep plating. 6A power plant, armored grade 5 and double braced. 6A thrusters, dirty grade 5 drag drives, 5A frame shift drive, shielded grade 5 and double braced, 5A, this was brought in by the stock profile here, 5A life support. Here you can select either lightweight or reinforced. Since we're doing a hull tank, I recommend reinforced because you'll only lose 4 meters per second and 544 is still close enough that you can deal with a ferdy lance. 6A power distributor, charge enhanced grade 5 and super conduits. This is pretty much the bog standard power distributor blueprint used on almost every ship thinking about combat. 4A sensors, long range grade 5. The 4C fuel tank is left untouched. 5C biweave, no, sorry, now we're getting into the optionals. A 5C biweave shield generator thermal resistant grade 5, and low draw to help keep the bi-weave from abusing your shield capacitor. It's always a good idea here when you're using bi-weaves to consider low draw. If you are an aggressive pip manager, you could also select fast charge or high capacity. The 5D and two of the 4D hull reinforcement packages are engineered heavy duty grade 5 and deep plating. The other remaining size 4 optional internal has a Guardian module reinforcement. This is the highest integrity module reinforcement available in Elite Dangerous, but you do have to remember that these module reinforcement packages draw extra power. Since we have the headroom down here, it's in up here. If you don't have Guardian tech unlocked, you can also use a regular module reinforcement package in the 4D category. A 3A FSD interdictor expanded capture art grade 4. You could replace this with a number of other things, limpet controllers or different tools you might favor for your particular style of combat. This is in here because the build as depicted here is a low endurance PVE build. It's designed to go out and kill one or two really powerful targets, which makes it ideal for hunting uh, pirates on the mission boards or for assassination contracts. These uh, hard points I'll get into here in a second are incredibly powerful. The 2D hull reinforcement packages down here are thermal resistant grade 5 reflective plating and kinetic resistant grade 5 angled plating. Because we're fighting against NPCs, they'll tend to favor kinetic weapons and missiles once your shields are down, so a little bit more kinetic resistance never hurts. But you could just as easily go down here and make this thermal resistant grade 5 reflective plating, which will bring your thermal resistance up above 50%. Useful if you think you're going to be engaged by a player using standard PvP weapons, as thermal damage tends to be the more blockable of the incoming damage types that PvP-oriented weapons will deal. Hard points. If you don't have engineers unlocked or any tech broker weapons, this is going to be something you'll have to chase. Shock cannons are a human tech broker weapon with phenomenal DPS while their magazine lasts. At 181 sustained damage per second, this is one of the highest damaging hardpoints in the game, but its damage is 100% kinetic. And that means that it doesn't fare well against any kind of shield. You'll want to be able to clear out a target shields before you really unload on these things, but the damage profile is so high 
that even if a target shields are up, you'll be able to use these to help shred them. Now, the shot cannon has two gimmicks that you have to be aware of. One is that its jitter is dynamic. The faster you fire, the more squirrely the weapon gets and the bigger your firing cone becomes. So to maximize DPS output, you wanna be as close to shot cannon range as you can get. And you'll wanna be prepared to empty the entire magazine in your enemy's face while you're there. So fast triggers or buttons help if you're using a HOTAS. Uh, and then to clear the shields out, the two medium hard points on this build are short range grade five and thermal vent. Thermal vent being important here because the shock cannon's other major gimmick is that it generates a ton of heat, unlike every other kinetic weapon in the game. This thing can very quickly overheat just about any ship in the book. So you'll want to be aware that while it's most desirable to fire as quickly as possible, you'll want to also moderate your firing potential so that uh, you aren't cooking your ship overly aggressively every time you come around and attack passes. And to help do that, we have a heat sink launcher over here in the corner. In the event you get really hot, you can pop one of these and save yourself. Now, shot cannons don't have a lot of ammunition. So no matter how you use this, no matter how precise you are, you're gonna find yourself running out of ammo within about 15 minutes, less than that if you really figure this thing out and can empty the entire magazine. It does have auto loader as a kind of an incentive to fire at a slower pace. So depending on your play style, this weapon is actually fairly flexible. The slower you fire, the more accurate it becomes, and it's capable of securing its maximum damage potential out to two and a half kilometers, which is fairly impressive for what this thing is. The shells do not extend beyond the three kilometer range, so your ideal engagement is anything under two and a half kilometers. The faster you fire, the greater your jitter, so remember that if you're going to really rip in someone's uh, rip into someone's hull, you're going to want to be closer than two and a half kilometers. Um, shot cannons come in basically every profile available, so if you don't feel confident in your accuracy, you can very easily throw gimbals in here. They will get confused by chaff, so keep that in mind when doing PvE. The uh, other half of our shield setup here, our shield boosters, are, sorry, these are supposed to be kinetic resistant force block and thermal resistant thermal block. This will get our two shield kinetic and thermal resistance values up into the 40s and 50s. So, and that's basically where you want to be for PvE or PvP. Since thermal damage is what NPCs favor against shields, having more of it is helpful to keep your uh, shields up for longer. We also have a chaff launcher down here because we're doing PvE to help reduce incoming damage when your shields pop or when you're otherwise in a bit of trouble. Ammo capacity is recommended for both the heat sink launcher and chaff launcher. Um, other considerations here, let me load up the capacitors. Where did that, where did that go? Hmm. Oh, sorry, they're right here. Four pips to systems gives you 34 seconds to recover from broken shields, plus an additional 46 seconds to recharge your shields once they recover. So you're looking at about minute 20, minute 30 to get everything back to full power, which is not bad. It's about as fast as shields can regenerate when you're using the maximum sized optional internal on a given hull. There are a few exceptions to that rule, though, if um, anyone wants to point them out in the comments. Power and costs. Total expenses for this build, 121.8 million to put everything in as laid out here before you even get into engineering. And I'll just remind everybody that engineering is not required on this build. You can make it work without any blueprints whatsoever, which makes it fast to throw together. Um, I do have a Super Cruise Assist module I forgot to mention. This is because hunting different types of mission targets can sometimes take a while, and it requires you to be in the area around a planetary body. So, uh, it's nice to be able to go stick free and just let your ship orbit wherever you need to be until the mission event pops up. That is all I have for today, so I will catch you guys later.